This video is sponsored by Finnish Design Shop. And just like that, I am back. Hi everyone, it's me, Alan Torp. Here on the channel, I love to share everything about Scandinavian design and this week is no exception. I will kick off a new series where I will take a look at the different decades from the very heydays in the 50s and 60s and throughout to modern time. I would look at the different designers of the different decades and of course look at some of the pieces designed in the different eras, which we are still appreciating today. If you like Scandinavian design, give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, let's continue. But wait, something just doesn't seem right. Hmm. Oh, now I know. Let's see if this works and if you can spot the difference. Now, that's better. I feel much more suited to talk about the first two decades, the 50s and 60s. It all starts a few years before, actually. Because already from the 30s, designers such as Elva Alto, Anne Jacobsen, Josef Frank and Maya Isola began producing their work, creating a golden age of Scandinavian design. Their work was inspired by the concept of constructivism, functionalism, and in some cases, surrealism. But it really didn't go anywhere or reach any kind of international recognition and its stellar levels of popularity until the 1950s, when the Lunning Prize was awarded to outstanding Scandinavian designers between 1951 and 1970 in a large, very talented, very dedicated and in many cases extremely diligent group of leading architects, designers and practice employees, you'd find the furniture designers, Finn Juhl, Hans Wiener, Anne Jakobsen and Beau Monsen as the trendsetting representatives of Danish Scandinavian design. Scandinavian design history and its concept has been the subject of scholarly debate, exhibitions and marketing agendas since that time. It's hard to believe that it's been 60 to 70 years since some of the most iconic and beloved pieces of design saw the light of day for the first time. Before I dive in and look at some of those great Scandinavian designs from the 50s and 60s, I want to thank today's sponsor, Finnish Design Shop. This is the go-to shop for everything Scandinavian design. Actually, they are the world's largest store specialized in Nordic design. They are the official dealer of over 280 brands, have nearly 90,000 items in stock and they ship super fast to over 180 countries. Of course, they only sell authentic products. Okay, so let's look at some of those designs. All products mentioned in today's video is available via Finnish Design Shop. All link in the description below. Okay, from the 50s you'll find Hans Wiener's wishbone chair. This chair is the epitome of Scandinavian chair chic. And I bet high on many design lovers wish list, if they don't have it already. The light but strong chair owes its inspiration to a portrait of Danish merchants sitting in Ming chairs, produced since the 1950 in Wiener's first collaboration with maker Karl Hansen whom is still the sole producer of this chair. The wishbone exemplifies Venus' maxim that a chair is to have no back side. It should be beautiful from all sides and angles. Master craftsman Anne Jacobsen, we all know for his many great furniture pieces, but in fact, he also revolutionized cutlery with his modern design. Originally designed for the SAS Royal Hotel here in Copenhagen in 1957, 
the pieces of the Anne Jacobsen cutlery set feel as contemporary today as they did when they first debuted. The cutlery is comfortable to hold and nicely balanced and the matte stainless steel lends elegance to any table setting. This collection has been called cutlery without frills because it is the sophisticated design that makes it stand out rather than a pattern or additional adornment. It takes a little getting used to because of its very slender design. But when you get used to not shoving in your food, this is just the most elegant cutlery you'll ever find. Louis Paulson's PH5 Pendant Light designed by Paul Henningsen in 1958 is a Danish design icon that has gained immense global popularity. The pendant structure is both elegant and innovative. The beautiful layered shapes prevent glare and provide pleasant warm toned lighting in any room. The name of the pendant refers to its designer and the main shades 50 centimeter diameter. PH5 pendant light is perfect above any dining table, but also suits higher mounting in various architectural spaces. Henning Koppel designed the iconic HK picture for George Jensen in 1952. The elegant picture features a slim, long handle and exaggerated lip. When not in use, the picture makes an attractive decoration for the kitchen or dining room. HK pitcher is made of mural polished stainless steel and is available in different sizes. It's no secret that the design scene in the 50s were predominantly leaded by white men. But one woman operated as mover and shaker in the male dominated mid-century modern design. That's Greta Grossman. In the 1940s, she immigrated to Los Angeles and quickly she attracted celebrity clients including Greta Gabo, Ingrid Bergman, Joan Fontaine and Frank Sinatra. She was an amazing architect, but she is most noted for her industrial design where the grasshopper floor lamp from 1947 and the cobra table lamp from the 1950s belongs to the most famous works she's done. I am a big fan of both lights and of Greta. I'm not gonna lie, there were not a lot more women in the Scandinavian design scene in the 60s either. However, color and plastic made its way into the interior. People were done with the rather depressing years after the war and became more optimistic for the future. I mean, hey flower power! <laughs> I know a change of clothes would have been fun here, but I kinda like this madman look. So I'm gonna stay in this suit. Anyway, speaking of flower power, one of the most influential and most recognized pattern ever made were designed by a fierce Finnish woman, Maya Isola. Her 60s iconic bold Unico print for Maya Meko have infused interiors with classics that invoke the era's sculptural aesthetics, lively color schemes and pop culture pizzazz. There are two designers who made plastic huge in Scandinavian design in the 60s. Do you know who? Leave a comment below right now if you do. Done? You, you left the comment? Okay, first one, Werner Panton. His Panton chair is one of the best known classics of modern furniture design. Designed in 1960, it reflects perfectly the experimental design mentality of the 60s. Back then, it was the first chair made of a single piece of plastic. Although his furniture designs are iconic, you probably seen more of his stunning lights in modern households. His moon pendant design inspired by the faces of the moon his VP Glow Pendant, which 
I actually have hanging above the dining table myself and of course this flower pot lamp which has more or less been a design icon since its arrival in the late 60s. The other designer who made plastic huge is another Finn, Iro Anjo, who presented maybe one of the best known classics of Finnish design, the ball chair. The chair became his international breakthrough. Iro Anjo has always been fascinated by new materials and round shapes. The round shell of the ball chair is simple yet ingenious and has often been referred to as a room in a room. I can't say I love it. It's definitely not the most comfy chair, especially for a taller person like me. But it's fun. Did you get both designers right? Okay, so that is it for me today. I hope you like this kind of video. I will return with another one in this series in the new year, where I will look at Scandi design from the 70s and 80s. And with that, I will end this year's videos with a huge thank you for all your support. All of you guys who are subscribers and all your comments and views, they mean the world. Have a fantastic New Year's, enjoy the holidays, and until next time, next year, 